It's our delight to welcome you here to Littlebourne Church uh, as for this service, which is the service for the first Sunday in Lent, the 21st of February. Alas, we are still in lockdown. Alas, it's just me and my wife Linda here in the church. But uh, you are with us in spirit, all those of you who are following from uh, Little Ward, from the other churches in the Benefice, from Wingham, and indeed uh, friends from far and wide who uh, tune in to this service. I do hope it will uh, be something that you really share in, that you've got the uh, access to a copy of the order of service. It's there on the, uh, on the Benefice website, and then many of you receive it by email. And there are, of course, as always, things that we share and that we join in. So we look forward to making this Eucharist together. Our first hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, Pilgrim Through This Barren Land. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus be with you all. And also with you. We prepare to worship God. Almighty God, to whom all, all hearts, hearts are open, open all desires known, known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden. hidden. Cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God. 
renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be collect. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness, or as tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Genesis. Our first reading for today is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. <clears throat> I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gradual are verses from Psalm 25. And I sing again to the ancient plain chart tones. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. But let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your power. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. They are from everlasting. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
the Lord, the great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's not uh, make a song and dance about it. This first Sunday in Lent has as its theme the temptation of Christ in the wilderness, we all know that story, that great story at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry after he'd been baptized. He goes into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil tempts him. There's three great temptations. Uh, the first is shown in its gory, gory detail in the, the marvelous medieval illustration I've put at the head of this order of service. There you are, there's the devil, there's Satan tempting Jesus to turn uh, stones into bread. But, wait a minute, this is the year of Mark. We're following Mark's Gospel, not Matthew or Luke. They're the ones who tell us uh, the, the full detail of the 40 days in the wilderness. Just remind ourselves how, sorry, Matthew and Luke, remind ourselves how Mark, this year's Gospel, how Mark tells it. Look, it's as simple as this. The Spirit immediately drove Jesus to the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. That's it. Nothing else. No detail. This is Mark. This is the essence of Mark. Mark doesn't hang around. Mark doesn't make a song and dance about anything. But Mark, one thing happens, then the next thing, then the next thing. And it may be that we can learn from that not making a song and dance about it. This Lenten period we just entered, this uh, when we, as it were, reimagine ourselves being in the wilderness for the 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. Just as Jesus was preparing for his years of ministry, so we, of course, are preparing for the climax of the Christian year in Holy Week with the death of Jesus and then Easter, of course with the resurrection. It's a time of preparation for us, as it was then, a time of his preparation for his ministry. But, as I said, let's not make a song and dance about it. One of the problems with keeping Lent, I don't know how rigorously you keep it or don't keep it, that's, it's up for you, but I, what I think one of the problems is that we do tend to make it something very dramatic it's a big deal, Lent. It's a big deal, all this giving up that I do, all this denying myself. And it's got to be a big deal because I'm so very, very, very naughty. And if God is to forgive me, there's got to be a kind of uh, a, 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 a balancing heroism. It's got to be something really, really big because I'm so really, really bad. And so it becomes heroic. Well, actually... There's nothing heroic about sin. There's nothing interesting about sinning. As it were, ignoring God's law of love and care and compassion 
isn't an act of heroism. It's silly. It's tawdry. It's often actually rather sordid. And it doesn't make us more interesting or more special. It actually denies what we can be. One of the points about the wilderness, the desert, is a place of scouring. You know, those desert winds and the sand dunes blowing about. It's a place where we're cleansed. When the truth that's underneath is laid bare. And the truth is wonderful. Because the truth is the women and men that God made us to be not overlaid with all the junk that we are all so good at overlaying it. Mark doesn't make a song and dance about the temptations in the wilderness. It's just simple. It's the next thing that happened to Jesus. It took place and then he went on to the next thing after that. I was kind of assumed that the desert the, I've never been to the desert, by the way. Uh, it was sort of a fantastically silent place, you know, like a 40-day retreat where there's just uh, you and possibly the, the bird song. Not at all. People tell me, go to these places. I mean, I said, the desert, very noisy. There's a wind, there's things rattling about. It's a noisy place. It's not silent. It's full of voices, if you like. For Jesus, the voice is the voice of the devil. But our tempting voice, the voices of temptation, I think don't come from outside, they come from inside. And we might feel that this year, to be invited to spend 40 days, as it were, in isolation in the wilderness, is a bit rich, because it's kind of what we're doing all the time. We've been isolated for almost a year now, living solitary lives, whether we want to or not, not out of our own heroic sanctity and holiness, but because we've got no choice if we're going to stay alive. So, as it were, now that Lent has come along, we're pretty used to it. We're practiced in this sense of isolation. But without making a song and dance about it, it may just be a good idea to listen harder to those voices of temptation which don't come from outside, but come from within. The temptation to not take other people as seriously as we take ourselves. The temptation to not really care very much about others because we're in a pretty miserable state, aren't we? Have I actually got any sympathy left for anybody else? Because my own life is so miserable. Well, if that's the voice from inside, the voice from outside is the voice of Jesus and the voice of God saying, not try harder, do better, give up more, but saying that giving that message which so many of us find so difficult to hear and so difficult to live out, what God says to us this Lent, you and me, is let me love you more. Amen. We proclaim the faith of the Church in the words of the Creed. We believe and trust in God the Father. We believe and trust in Jesus Christ, God the Son. We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in God, God the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God. God.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, just whenever you're ready, start. Okay. Patterns can be beautiful, Lord, a snowflake or gossamer on a hazy morning, each touched by you, each brought into being by your love. May our lives be touched by you and be part of the glorious design you have for our world. During the season of Lent, we pray for the mission of the church that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray for the worldwide church and especially for Archbishop Justin and Bishop Rose. Help them and all clergy as they guide your church forward in this our local area. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for our world in the throes of a health disaster. The hope of vaccines is here, but we need to work together to ensure there is access to them for all the world's people, whether rich or poor. This pandemic has shown us that we cannot and should not isolate ourselves from each other, no matter what our nationality, religion or creed. We must work together for peace in the world and that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Lord God, great healer of all, we pray for those who are ill or who are being treated in hospital. Please give comfort in their pain, your strength in weakness and your hope in uncertainty. We pray especially for all those being treated for COVID-19 and for all those who are caring for them. We especially bring before you, Lord, all those working in our intensive care units. May we all comply with the guidelines in force during lockdown, so we can bring down the death rate and case numbers. We commit anybody who has recently died to your unfailing love. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall, by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace. Since we're justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who's given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, cleanse us from my sin, wash me from my iniquity, that I may worthily approach your holy altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. On the night before he was betrayed, at supper with his friends he took bread, and gave you thanks, he broke it, gave it to him, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, dying you destroyed, destroyed our death, death. rising you, you restored, restored our life, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come in, in glory. Father, send your Holy Spirit on us now. May this bread and this wine be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In the the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ.
us say together the prayer after communion. Lord God, you've renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it, you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love this day and in all eternity. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.